Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. From home, honey. Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. Well, this isn't a normal episode. Normally I go out, I find stuff, or I do things. This time something has come to me, but it's something kind of cool. It's a bunch of old newspapers. Now, you might not think that's really neat or exciting, but these newspapers have been stashed inside the walls of a local home here for over a hundred years. The story goes, um, <laughs> the story goes, like it happened a million years ago, this happened recently. They were renovating one of the houses in the area where my store is, they're peeling off the walls, and what's plastered underneath all the walls? a whole pile of newspapers. Now, why would somebody put newspapers in a wall? They were accessible, they were cheap, oftentimes free after the fact, and they made some kind of insulation. You know, that probably wouldn't be the best insulation in the world, but they would use it sort of like you'd use like a Tyvek wrap now or something, where they would just paper the walls and then sawdust would go in between and uh, they would try and keep the draft out. Very early way of insulating, it's crazy that you know it stood the test of time and these papers are actually still in remarkably good condition so we're going to look through some of them and see what was happening these papers range from um october 1927 to january 1928 so pretty cold time of year for them to be doing construction here in canada because uh outside this time of year which is the time of year it is right now it's freezing cold um and i can only imagine back then without the uh same gear apparel and heaters that we have now it was probably a little frosty but without further ado let's look through some of the papers this paper was from tuesday november 8th 1927 what are they talking about the principles and epic aerial death battle now um during world war one there was a local pilot named wap may and he was being pursued by Baron Manfred von Richthofen. As the Baron was flying after him, um, another pilot came behind and was able to take down the Baron's plane. Of course, Baron Richthofen was the Red Baron. Uh, and it has a local connection here because uh, he was in pursuit of somebody from my town, Watt May. So they're talking about that story. Uh, about how it happened. But one thing they got wrong, I, they got in the reporting wrong, they said on the afternoon of April 18th, 1920, over a little French village of Salles les sec an Edmonton boy. Well, it wasn't 1920, for starters, um, because the war was over by then. If they were shooting down some German guys playing in 1920, that would have just been some guy out in his airplane. No, that'd be a whole different story. Um, it actually happened in 1918. So they had a little bit of a misprint there, which is funny. I wonder how many people wrote in after that. Um, but an amazing story, you know, um, and he was a uh, big character around our town here, Watt May. They have a mural painted on the wall of him. And uh, yeah, I'm sure he was a little nervous when he saw that red, famous red plane come shooting out of the clouds at him. He took off and uh, luckily they were able to get the guy and put him out of commission. But a uh, very famous pilot. Lots of stuff happening in the news around that time. These are some of the ads from Tuesday, November 29th, 1927. So Burke's Diamonds, talking about their uh, diamonds just waiting for you. You may decide the price of your engagement ring before coming to Burke's. Our price range will suit any purse. From the lowest price to the highest, a host of exquisite creations awaits your inspection at Burke's. They're still in business. They're still around. Hungry pork and beans. <laughs> there you go. Complete set of teeth. 35 bucks. <laughs> it looks like wind up novelty teeth. I'm sure that would have looked funny if you were wide. <laughs> I don't know that they would have been fitted as, as well as what we have now, but hey, at least you'd have some choppers. This is an ad that didn't age very well. Penman's health underwear. <laughs> Here he is there performing exercise number 12 in his underwear. And what's exercise number 12 called? It's called the humper. Uh, what are you doing in there, honey? Never mind. 
Yep. How things have changed. <laughs> yeah, not many ads now advertising the humper position. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm an immature child sometimes, but you know, you gotta laugh. Here's the headlines from October 20th, 1927. Big U.S. dirigible to fly to Ottawa. Well, that of course would have been something like that. Zeppelins. They were all the rage. They in fact thought that that would be the thing over airplanes. They thought that Zeppelins would be the way that you got around. Um... You know, and there was a lot of effort, a lot of money going into it. Um, you know, basically like a castle in the sky. $6.5 million airship. We'll compare in size with the $50,000 battleship of U.S. Arkansas. It's an absolutely huge airship. A lot of money invested in them. Uh, of course, with the uh, crashing of the Hindenburg, kind of... Um, stopped it in its tracks and uh air travel by zeppelin was not really a thing mind you there's people saying now that that might be something that should or could possibly come back um hopefully they don't fill the next ones with hydrogen you know it's not really the safest thing to have <laughs> um but uh really innovative i mean you can imagine at the time people were seeing these massive airships in fact, the concept of travel by dirigible or Zeppelin was so popular that the owners of the Empire State Building put out this picture, which was doctored, of the U.S. naval ship docked at the top. Now, they did have some rough plans in place to actually make this a reality. It never happened, but their concept was dock at the top, down at street level in seven minutes. What a concept. Never happened, but how cool was that? What else is going on? Okay, so we got the dirigibles, Canada facing prosperity era, but look, there's... Uh... Spirit of St. Louis is Lindbergh. So he is at Mexico City after delay. This is during the time of his uh, famous flights, making his trips in the uh, Spirit of St. Louis. Just a really interesting time, you know, air travel was coming in. Uh, they didn't know, was it gonna be airplanes? Actually, planes at that time were more of a novelty, I guess, than anything where people were uh, doing these experimental uh, flights to kind of see what, what they were capable of. This exciting time of air travel drew a lot of interest from many different people, including female aviators like Frances Wilson Grayson. She was the niece of President Woodrow Wilson. She too, an early female pilot, attempted in a storm a flight uh, right around Christmas time and unfortunately, she was feared lost at sea. Uh, it is true, they actually used one of those big airships, the dirigible, to search for her and it had no luck. Um, so unfortunately, she did not make the uh, the trip. It was an icy, stormy day. They, they said she shouldn't travel and, and she went out and sadly did not make it. But you know, a lot of people were, uh, a lot of people were really um, uh, trying to push themselves. Amelia Earhart, Lindbergh, you know, and the lucky ones made it. And if I look down from this article on Mrs. Grayson's unfortunate uh, flight that she was about to take, we see something here. Man had $10,000 worth of liquor in home. Well, that was a pretty big deal because prohibition had kicked in and they're saying that um, if you had pre-prohibition liquor, it uh, was allowed, but this guy had 10 grand worth at that time. He was uh, doing a little bit more than partying with that much alcohol. Well, here's a neat headline. The grads will play here December 2nd and 3rd in the arena. The Edmonton grads were an Olympic level, all women's basketball team. Very early, very prolific. You ever look them up? Pretty, uh, pretty crazy stuff. And uh, they did travel all around the world playing. Um, you know, it was a big deal. Not only were they uh, local to Edmonton, but they were all women. And I think that's fantastic that they reached such great heights. Coached by uh, J. Percy Page, who we have a school named after here in town. Let's see. Thousands greet Lindbergh at Mexico after 2,000 mile flight. There he is in the spirit of St. Louis right on the front page of this December 14th 1927 Canada faces prosperity era
Neato. Program for U.S. Navy, big. $700 million invested. Funny how some things change and some things stay the same. Somebody read this paper and planted it in a wall all those years ago, and now here I am looking through it all these years later. Bet they didn't think that would be happening. Okay, let's check out the real estate. Real estate wanted acreage. Farms for sale, Stony Plain. We have 160 acres, only one mile from town. 67 acres cultivated and cleared. New frame house and log out buildings, land level, deep black soil. Price $5,040. If you want the one that's a couple miles down the road, it's still 160 acres with more acres that are cleared. And that's $4,500. Must be nice. 160 acres for five grand, but that was, that was a lot of uh, cash back in the day. Garneau bungalow, yeah. Houses for sale for $2,600. $3,900. This is all before the depression, of course, too. Let's see, here's some foreign news. Leon Trotsky, now in total eclipse, is hissed and booed at communist executive meeting. Moscow, Leon Trotsky, former code dictator of Russia's pop people, went under a total political eclipse today. He's even threatened with loss of his long connection with official Soviet Russia ordinary membership among hundreds of thousands of others. Try to make a might try to make a speech and they but they were having none of it. Oh, I didn't really even look through at some of the advertisements that were probably in here too. There's ooh clove flavored lifesavers. Why is it that men enjoy lifesavers between smokes? I never thought about lifesavers is being a counterpart to smoking. And I also didn't think that clove flavored lifesavers would be a really great deal. Um, nope, no thanks. I don't think I need to have the flavor of clove, but who knows, maybe it was delicious. Round tree plain York chocolate. This paper has got a little bit of wear. Got Gillette razors. That's quite the range in price. Five dollars to seventy-five dollars. Seventy-five bucks for a razor back then. That would have had to, man. That would have had to have been solid gold or something. Absolutely crazy. That'd be a very expensive razor. You better slick your hair back and call you dandy for that price. Shoes. What was the cost of shoes? Shirts were a dollar and fifteen cents. Buffalo kids coats, those would be like furry coats. Sheep lined, 15 bucks. Hats for $8. Women's boudoir slippers, 50 cents a pair. Chesterfield suite for your home. See, we, call, we have called in Canada couches Chesterfields for some reason. I don't think we still call them that. I mean, I don't, but 98 bucks if you want the whole set. $210. That's big money for back then, considering a house was, you know, only probably a couple thousand bucks for a house. And you're spending a couple hundred dollars on your furniture. That's, that's a healthy investment. Castor oil. That's an early castor oil ad. The finest winter motor oil on the Canadian market today. Yep, because uh, oil gets really thick. Oh, look at this. McLaughlin's ginger ale. They became uh, Canada Dry. A grand old ginger ale. His brother had the McLaughlin car manufacturing company. But look at the, uh, look at all the different flavors. Ginger shandy, lemon sour, root beer, double soda. Those sound great. JJ McLaughlin's. Yeah, makers of the world famous Canada Dry pale ginger ale. Neato. I love looking at old ads. Not only does it give you an idea of what stuff you used to sell for back in the day, but it gives you an idea of what things were used for. Sometimes you see ads for things and you realize just how something was made or used. 
all sorts of stuff happening around town. You know, your usual stuff like infrastructure costs and civil servants being elected, cold weather. Some, some news is very similar to the type of news you'd have now, but you don't hear much people talking about when a butter expert comes through town. Hey kids, gather around. Mr. Paul Schwartz is coming to town, butter, local butter expert. I hear he's a real smooth talker, that Paul Schwartz. It's an ad. Because we're a, a dominion of, of um, we were a British colony essentially, we ended up with some British newspapers like this, the Oldham Chronicle from 1927. What are they advertising? Citroens. Again, Leeds, the unquestionably the most marvelous motor car value in the world, 225 pounds for a car. That's kind of a nice looking one there. I'd drive one of those, sure, why not? Great looking little thing. 225 pounds to get you a, a, a car. You know, you're talking 1500 bucks for that used uh, Buick a minute ago, and then you got in England. Heck, that seems like a deal. Slipping to the ground when he tried to board a train and got his leg underneath the wheels of the train. Now there's a, there's something you wouldn't want to have happen. I'm sure that was probably more common then than it is now. If you're if you're trying to board a train, I don't think you're going to be slipping underneath. Let's see what else is going on. Page the world news told in pictures. Anita Peabody. Wolves as traveling companions. What PJ and Bright and W. Boker of Cranbrook, BC created a sensation even in Los Angeles. They drove from Canada with three timber wolves chained in the back of their car. Um, that would have been, I guess that's one security, to, you know, like they didn't have car alarms back then. So, what are you going to do? Chain up some timber wolves in the back. <laughs> oh, man. The stuff that was going on back in the old days. But, you know, you look at some of the things and some of the uh, inventions they had, and they were advanced in a lot of ways, but. They were also chaining timber wolves up in their car just for fun. The last dog train to leave Lower Fort Gary, 1909. Hudson's Bay Company ads. Okay, let's see what else is going on in the news. And you might be wondering how much did food cost back then? Well, look, here's a menu from the King Edward Cafe here in town. Sunday, Christmas dinner, 12 to eight. Don't fuss with Christmas dinner, but come to the King Edward and enjoy our specially prepared meal. Delicious turkey, cranberry sauce, plum pudding, and everything be early to make sure for a full table. Full course, 75 cents for turkey, stuffing, plum pudding, cranberry sauce, the whole thing, 75 cents. Or if you want the Monday Christmas dinner, which is pretty smart, it's probably a bunch of leftovers, uh, it was a dollar. I wonder why it was more the next day. I guess maybe they were serving less people, who knows? <laughs> Special Christmas music will be played all through both meals, Sunday and Monday. Wow, not bad, 75 cents. Feel like price has gone up a fair bit on a full turkey dinner nowadays. Here's another key thing that changed in marketing. Look at this. It's not weight loss, it's a weight gain ad. Skinny women don't stand a chance. Gain pounds of weight with new yeast and iron. Pleasant to take, quick results, or pay nothing. So look, the poor skinny girl back there is all upset because the uh, girl who's got a few more pounds on her is getting the attention. My home, marketing has switched in the last number of years. Some things might have changed for the better though because I'm not sure if I was feeling a little weak, nervous, and melancholy that I would try Milburn's heart and nerve pills. Those seem to be two things that are unrelated and I don't want a pill to take care of both. I'm feeling a little nervous. You know what you should take? One of my heart and nerve pills. <laughs> oh, the things that they did. You know, and I did see an article in one of these papers too that was saying a, a lady was given uh, poison to calm her nerves and died of it. I imagine it was around that time they decided that was probably a bad idea and stopped giving people, you know, poison as a prescription. My goodness, the things we learn. You know, one thing I didn't realize, and I know that this, the amusement section is pretty much like your Hollywood um, movies and things like that. But you got Rin Tin Tin. It was a big hit in the 20s. And look, they even brought Rin Tin Tin around to meet people. Going to be at the Rialto Theater next Monday. And the Capitol Theater. What were they playing? It was called One Woman to Another. 
Don't dare breathe it to a soul, but we have it on very good authority that one woman to another is the best picture Florence Viter has ever been in. But what's neat about this, and I didn't realize that they did this, it says, look extra, nightly at 8.30 all this week, the Midwest Studio presents Movies in the Making, written and enacted by local people. See it filmed. $25 given first prize, the winning scenario. So they were they were making their own movies in the movie theater. They were filming them. And they're actually casting, too. Look, wanted young lady, blonde preferred, to take the leading role. Why would it matter if it was black and white? <laughs> what would it matter if you were blonde? Wanted young lady, blonde preferred, to take the leading role. Apply at once to manager Capital Theater. Uh, so that's a neat part of our history that I didn't uh, know that they were playing that. Look, there's the gem theater playing all these old movie theaters that have kind of come and gone in our town over the years, but I didn't realize that they were making films at the theater too. So it's kind of neat to look through what was once locked away in somebody's wall, a little bit of history. And newspapers and magazines are kind of a great way to learn about what happened in your area or your community or even in the world at that time. That's why it's always fun to look through. So thanks for spending some time with me looking through this stuff today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, as for me, I guess I've got some newspapers to try and sort out and see how many uh, full papers are here. That ought to take me a while. <laughs> Have a wonderful day, guys. We'll see you all soon and bye for now.